Now, uh, I will uh, discuss about elementary symmetry operation and derivation of plane lattices. Uh, we know that uh, the atoms make bond. Atoms make strong bond, like metallic bond, ionic bond, and covalent bond. And this strong bonding between the atoms makes the arrangement of billions of billions of atoms in a periodic manner of having long-range orderness. And this is what we call crystal structure. And here it is important that this atom has the bonding with a periodic manner with a long-range orderness. This long-range orderness makes for us to think about the general arrangement of atoms in a systematic manner. Now, of course, sometimes the bonding of atoms makes solid materials, but with only short range of order, and it lost long range orderness, and we called it amorphous. For instance, here is the two dimensional schematic drawings of quartz with a long range orderness of silicon dioxide and the glass which the chemistry is the same with the silicon dioxide, but it only has short range orderness. And this is again called amorphous. And this long range orderness with some periodic manners, some patterns, this is what we call crystal structures. And because of that, the crystal structure is basically defined by the periodic arrangement of atoms. And of course, uh, there are types of atoms and the number of atoms that can be quite different. So there are many different types of crystal structures and many different types of solid materials which has crystal structures. Now, once we know that, of course, we try to make some systematic understandings of how we can understand these crystal structures which is composed by many different atoms and, and many different number of atoms. But we know that it should make some periodic arrangement. This is one simple criteria which makes the crystal structures, which is repetitiveness, okay? Long range orderness. With these basic ideas, we try to derive some systematic way of looking at it, looking at all different crystal structures. Basically, that's crystallography. Uh, that's crystallography. Okay? So thus, instead of investigating the arrangement of all the different atoms, all different number of atoms, there are thousands, thousands of crystal structures. And instead of investigating this complicated arrangement of atoms, we approach it geometrically and when doing that, symmetry is one of the most important things to understand it, this crystal structure systematically. Anyway, what we do is, all right, we just make any geometrical point. And we know that crystal structure has long range orderness. So in three-dimensional space, in two-dimensional plane, for instance, if there is a lattice point, and if there is any translation vector of T1, then we know that there is a same T1 translation vector. There should be the lattice point, and there should be lattice point. And in another dimension, T2, if there is a lattice point located here, because the repetitiveness should be there, then we know that there should be some lattice point and lattice point and lattice point like this. And if we have three translation vectors, geometrical point should be arranged in three-dimensional space in periodic manner, okay? And now we put some atoms, arrangement of atoms along this lattice point with physically and chemically identical, then we can systematically understand all different crystal structures. For instance, this is the crystal structure made by three different type of atoms. And this one has the long range orderness, basically repetitiveness. 
So we put the chemically, physically identical set of atom arrangement, which we call bases, and we put this basis on this repetitiveness arrangement of lattice points, geometrical points, then we can understand all the crystal structures, which is basically repetitiveness of certain type of atoms. And in this, this case, the basis should be identical to each lattice point. Okay, again, we want to understand the systematic arrangement of atoms. Only one thing that we have to remember, repetitiveness. In three-dimensional space, so there is A1 vector, A vector, B vector, C vector, and we put geometrical points. These geometrical points, it's just the geometrical points. This is what we call lattice point. And this lattice point just to designate about this repetitiveness. Now we put chemically, physically identical arrangement of atoms to each lattice point because this lattice point should be identical, okay? Then we can understand these complicated structures of crystal structures. So these are the basis of understanding crystal structure. Now, in order to do that, uh, there is symmetry elements with the repetitiveness. Of course, this is the basics, but we put the symmetry elements in there. Then we systematically build up this arrangement of lattice points, okay? And in order to do that, there are some basic symmetry elements, which we call rotational symmetry, reflection symmetry, inversion center, and rotation inversion symmetry. And these are what I would like to discuss with you in this time. For instance, there's n-fold rotational symmetry. If it is identical when rotated by 360 degree by n. For instance, two-fold symmetry, which we call diet. For molecules, water has the two-fold symmetry because there's oxygen and there's a hydrogen. And here, if you're looking at on top, this hydrogen has 180 degrees, it has two-fold rotational symmetry. In the poles, if there is a rotational symmetry elements in here, if there is any general pose in here, then if you rotate through this rotation axis by about 180 degrees, then there should be another pole in here. This is what we call, it has two-fold symmetry, and this is what we call diet. And if you represent it on the stereo projections, for instance, this pole should locate at the surface of the sphere now this rotation axis is perpendicular. And this rotation pole locates in here, which is a G axis. Now if there is any pole, you rotate by 180 degrees, okay? Then this is, you designate by the circles with a certain radius. Then you rotate by 180 degrees. So if there is any pole in here, then the same pole should be in here. In this case, the rotation axis is perpendicular, okay? So this is stereographic projections of this two-fold symmetry where the rotation axis is perpendicular. Now there is three-fold symmetry, which we call triad, or each molecule's boron trichloride has the three-fold symmetry because there's boron and there is chlorine in here in the same plane, which has about 120 degree rotations you have the same chlorine. So for molecule, this is something that we call it has threefold symmetry. For the pores, if there is any pole in here, and if this rotation axis is perpendicular, then you rotate by 120 degree, 120 degree, 120 degree. So there should be pole in here. And in the stereographic projection, now the rotation axis is perpendicular. So if there is any one pole in here, then you have rotate 120 degree, 120 degree. Then this is the designation of three-fold symmetry in the stereo projection. Of course, we have four-fold symmetry, which is called quartet, not diet. And this is 90 degree rotation again 
you have stroke projection, you have certain poles in here, then you rotate 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degree, so it generates four folds. It has basically four folds. And six fold symmetry, triad, this one has 360 degree by divided by six, so it has 60 degree rotation. This is the stereo projection of six fold symmetry. Okay, so it's simple. Any poles, now the perpendicular rotation axis, you have few angles of rotations where the uh, n fold basically 360 degree divided by n. Now, this is quite important, and I hope you clearly understand this. Note that molecule, each molecule can have 5-fold, 7-fold, 12-fold rotational symmetry, but they cannot be arranged in crystal structure with that symmetry. Why? In crystal, again, I told you that the repetitiveness is the basics of this making this crystal structure. So there is A1 vector, and there is A2 vector, and A3 vectors, which should designate the repetitiveness of this lattice point. And I wanted to describe about what kinds of rotational symmetry per each lattice point can have. So whenever we discuss about rotational symmetry in crystal structure, we have to think about that the basically the repetitiveness is the, the basic guidelines which we should map for each molecules this one molecule is just it's there. It can have five fold, seven fold, and twelve fold. But crystal structure is different in molecules. Crystal structure, there should be the repetitiveness that should govern the, how this crystal structure is built up. Okay? So this rotational symmetry should map the basic conditions of this repetitiveness. What I meant is this. For instance, you have one lattice point in here, one lattice point in here with T1 translation vectors. It means that there is a, another lattice point with a T1 translation, with another lattice point with a T1 translation in this one x axis. Now, if this lattice point has fourfold symmetry, then this one has 90 degree rotation, 90 degree rotation, 90 degree rotation, 90 degree rotation. And the lattice point should be identical. So for any lattice point has fourfold symmetry, then all the lattice points should have fourfold symmetry. So this one also has fourfold symmetry. So this should be rotated like this, should be rotated like this, should be rotated like this, should be rotated like this. Now the question is the poles which can be generated by the rotational symmetry satisfied the translation vectors, which governs this, the definition of crystal structures. In here, this pole and this pole, which is generated by four-fold symmetry, has the separation of T1 vector for the 90-degree rotation, so it matches, it satisfies the basic repetitiveness of these crystal structures. So four-fold symmetry is okay. Four-fold symmetry can be in the crystal structures. For instance, three-fold axis, if there is one lattice point, one lattice point, 120 degree, one translation vectors, then this one generates here and this one generates here. And of course, this one generates here and this one generates here. Now, this distance is now 2t. It matches. If there is any pause in here, it's okay. Okay, basic repetitiveness unit component is in there. So threefold rotational axis can exist in crystal structures. But for instance, fivefold axis, which cannot be in the crystal structure, then if there's one pole in here, there's one pole in here, now you rotate the 70 degree, 72 degree rotation, and you generate lattice point. And this one generates 72 degree, generates lattice point. Now, if you calculate the separation distance between these two lattice points, that is not the integer number of these t translation vectors. 
Okay, so it cannot satisfy the definition of crystal structure where the repetitiveness is the basic guidelines, basic requirements of crystal structures. It cannot satisfy it. So it means that there can be five-fold symmetry for each molecule. But in the crystal structures, where this repetitiveness is the basic governing conditions, there cannot be five-fold symmetry. For each molecule is okay, but it cannot be in the crystal structures. In general, for instance, if I have A, A prime, one lattice translation vectors, if I rotate for alpha degree, if I rotate for alpha degree and generate another lattice points in here, then if I, can, if I calculate the distance B between these two generated lattice points, and this B can be expressed as T minus ET cosine alpha, because this alpha is the rotation angle, and it should satisfy the integer number of translation vector t. Okay, in this case, m should be expressed as 1 minus 2 cosine alpha, so 2 cosine alpha is expressed as 1 minus m, and this should be m, this m should be integer numbers. Okay, in order to satisfy the translation vectors. If we do these calculations, then their conditions has only this B vector is the case where this N is only 2, 3, 4, 6. Other than that, it, this B is not the integer number of T translation vectors, so these kinds of rotational symmetry cannot be in the crystal structures. So in the crystal structure, there can only be one fold, two fold, three fold, four fold, six fold. Okay? So rotational symmetry for n equal to two. So there is one pole, there is another pole. Now we are, I rotate by two fold, two fold, this distance is three t, so it satisfies. n equal to three, it satisfies. n equal to four, it satisfies. N equal to 60 degree, alpha is 60 degree, it satisfies. Of course, N1 is satisfies, it's always in there, okay? So there can be only two-fold, three-fold, four-fold, six-fold. If two-fold is in there, in, in lattice points, then there is a plane net that can be defined, okay? So if there's one lattice point and there is another lattice point with one translation vector, T1. Then, of course, there's another lattice point in here. Then now it has two-fold symmetry, so it has 180-degree rotation, 180-degree rotation. So now we have to define any arbitrary angles with the lattice point with T2 vectors. Then this T2 vector generates another lattice point, another lattice point, another lattice point, because Lattice point should be identical in every sense, physics, chemistry, rotational symmetry, in any cases, then we can build up the plane net of the lattice points, which is based on two-fold rotational symmetry. By the same token, we can build the plane net of lattice points, which is based on threefold. Now, lattice point in here, lattice point in here, there is a T1 vector. Then by 120 degree rotation, now in this case, this one should be 120 degree rotations. And there is another lattice points in here, 120 degree rotation. For each lattice points, there is a threefold, there is threefold, there is threefold. Then now we can build up this plane net based on threefold rotation axis. In this case, this angle should be 120 degree. This one is T1 vector and this one is T2 vector. Now the magnitude of T1 vector and T2 vector should be the same. So that's the plane net of crystal uh, lattice points based on threefold rotational symmetry. And this is the plane net of the lattice point based on fourfold rotational symmetry. Of course, in this case, this is T1 vector, this is T2 vector, and now this one has 90 degree angle rotation 
And of course, the magnitude of T1 vector and T2 vector is the same. Now, this is n equals 6, six-fold rotation for each 60-degree rotation. There is a lattice point, okay? So this is T1 vector, and now this is T2 vector. The magnitude of T1 vector and T2 vector is the same. Now, if you're looking at it, then the plane net uh, based on threefold and sixfold is basically the same. Plane net shape is the same. But now, when you put the basis along this lattice point, if it follows the threefold symmetry, then that's plane net based on threefold symmetry. If I put the basis with the sixfold rotation along this surrounding these lattice points, now this is the plane net of a lattice point based on six-fold rotational symmetry. The matrix operation of the rotational symmetry is basically simple. Of course, if I have any point x, y, z, now I rotate certain angles through this rotational axis. Now I can find out x, y, and g. Now x prime and y prime. Now I can designate this one as the matrix form. And this is the rotational symmetry elements based on the g-axis of rotation, and phi is the rotational angle. And if you find out the determinant, and the determinant is 1, and if the, this determinant has the positive numbers, and this is what we call right-hand to right-hand shape kind of operations. Okay. Now, there is another symmetry, which we call mirror symmetry. Mirror symmetry is now, this is the mirror plane. So plane is the symmetry elements. If I have any pose in here with right-hand side, because if I show this like this, then the mirror image makes the right-hand to left-hand operations, right-hand to left-hand operations in the mirror planes. And the matrix form, is designated like this. Now, if you get the determinant of this MX mirror plane, this one shows minus one, which shows that the right hand now makes the left hand operations. Another basic symmetry element is the inversion center. Inversion center is now, I have one pole in here, you invert it, which means that if I have any stereogram in here, now I have the pole, upper pole in these directions. If this lattice point has the inversion center, then you have to invert it, okay? So this upper pole makes the down pole in here. In this case, so x, y, g makes minus x, minus y, and minus g. And this is the matrix forms of the inversion center. Now you get the determinant of this inversion center then this one also shows minus one, which means that this inversion makes the right hand to left hand operations, okay, inversion centers. For it, rotational elements, right hand is right hand, it's congruent operation. Congruent means the same uh, right hand to right hand, but middle plane operation and inversion center operation makes the right hand to left hand operation. So this is what you call incongruent operations of the symmetry. 